हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम सो मच टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल द डॉक्टर कृष्णन लेक्चर आई एम डॉक्टर रमेश कृष्णन डूइंग सुपर स्पेशलाइजेशन इन न्यूरोलॉजी एट इन द प्रस्त अपोलो हॉस्पिटल न्यू दिल्ली डू सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल फॉर रेगुलर अपडेट्स ऑन इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स ऑफ द मेडिकल साइंस इन दिस लेक्चर वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट डायग्नोसिस ऑफ मल्टीपल स्क्लोरोसिस Let us start our presentation with a clinical case. A 27-year-old woman presented with numbness and tingling in her bilateral lower limbs extending up to her mid torso. There was no bladder or bowel dysfunction and had not noticed any weakness while walking. She denies any prior history of transient neurological symptoms. On examination there was diminished sensation to light touch and increased vibration sensation threshold in her toes this was normal at the ankle she had sensory level at c5 mri of her brain showed single periventricular lesions oriented perpendicular to the lateral ventricle she had cladonium enhancing lesion at c6 She had one other subcortical lesion in the left frontal white matter. Lumbar puncture showed CSF a specific oligoclonal vein with no white blood cells or other abnormal findings. Her serum ESR and C-reactive proteins, as well as anti-leukemia antibody and vitamin B12, were normal. So, what is your diagnosis? we will come to this case later in our discussion but first start with a topic that is clinically isolated syndrome or relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis it is defined by first clinical relapse of ms including unilateral visual change and eye pain suggestive of optic neuritis and unilateral sensory or motor symptoms with or without accompanying bladder or bowel dysfunctions along with infratentorial symptoms that can include imbalance in coordinations diplopia or vertigo duration of clinical symptomatology is a minimum of 24 hour but can persist up to days to weeks let us discuss the diagnosis of clinically isolated syndromes or relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis we have the 2017 macdonald criteria for diagnosis of relapse onset multiple sclerosis it includes the number of clinical attacks number of lesions with the objective clinical in evidence and additional data is needed for the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis we have the three variables the patient is having greater than two clinical attacks with the two lesions showing the objective clinical evidence of that clinical attacks then we do not need the additional data to confirm the diagnosis of relapse onset multiple sclerosis or the patient is having greater than two clinical attacks with one lesions showing the clear cut historical evidence of prior attacks involving lesions of distinct anatomical locations in that case also we do not need the additional data for the diagnosis of relapse onset multiple sclerosis either the patient is having greater than two clinical attacks but is having one lesion showing the objective clinical evidence of that clinical attacks then we need decimation in as space as the additional clinical data to confirm the diagnosis of ms or the patient is having one clinical attacks with two lesions showing the objective clinical evidence then we need decimation in time as the additional clinical data or by mri or csf specific oligoclonal vents 
and the additional data to confirm the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Or the patient is having one clinical attack with one lesion showing the objective clinical evidence of that clinical attack. Then we need the two data that is dissemination in a space and the additional clinical attacks implicating the different CNS sites or by MRI and dissemination in type as the additional clinical attacks or by MRI or demonstration of CSF specific oligoclonal bands. In all these cases, we can make the diagnosis of relapse onset multiple sclerosis. Now, what is the 2017 McDonnell criteria for demonstration of dissemination in a space and time by MRI in the patient with clinically isolated syndrome? Dissemination in a space demonstrated by one or more of the T2 hyperintense lesion characteristic of multiple sclerosis in two or more of the four areas of the central nervous system. These areas include periventricular, cortical or juxtacortical, infratentorial brain lesions or a spinal cord. Or dissemination in time can be demonstrated by simultaneous presence of gladonium enhancing and non enhancing lesions at the same time. Or a new T2 hyperintense or gladonium enhancing lesions on follow up MRI with reference to the baseline scans, irrespective of time of the baseline MRI. In these cases, dissemination in time is fulfilled or we can demonstrate it. Now come to the case that we have discussed in the beginning. This patient is having one clinical attack in the form of numbness and tingling in her bilateral lower limb extending up to the mid dorso. She denies any prior history of transient neurological illness and the examination finding supports the clinical attacks. So this patient is having one clinical attack. Now, this patient is having a gladonium enhancing lesions at C6. So, these lesions have the objective clinical evidence of the clinical attacks. So, one clinical attack with one lesion showing the objective clinical evidence. Now, we need dissemination in a space as well as time at the ad as the additional data to confirm the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. As this patient is having periventricular and a spinal cord lesions, so dissemination in a space as the criteria is fulfilled, along with the simultaneous presence of gladonium enhancing and non enhancing lesions, meets the criteria for dissemination in time, as well as the CSF specific oligoclonal bands further supports the diagnosis of further supports the dissemination in time. So, this was a case of clinically isolated syndrome.